Hello crafty friends! My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. It is time for the September Oh So Inspired collaboration. I hope you'll stick around to see who inspired us this month, what I created, and how to see all of the other creations in the hop. I am super excited to be back with another video for the Oh So Inspired collaboration. If you're new to my channel or new to this series, each month on the 20th I get together with a group of my crafty friends to have a little fun and hopefully inspire you. We take the same inspiration piece and create something new based upon it. It could be using the same colors, using the same kind of stamp, maybe the layout. As you hop along today, you're going to see so many different styles and cards that were inspired by that one piece. This month, we are being inspired by Chris Smith, who is at inkpad1 on Instagram, and up on the screen now is the card that we chose. What stood out to me about the card and what I'll be taking inspiration from today is that scallop edge on the right, that gingham paper there in the background, and how her focal point was in that bottom third. Once you're done with my video, I know you're going to want to check out what everybody else created. To do that, you can click on the hashtag in the title, but if that seems to be acting up, I do have a playlist in the description box below that I will update as soon as I can. Also, everybody's links are down there if you want to go directly to their channel. Let's get crafty! For my card, I want that pattern paper strip on the right to be on the inside of the card but still be able to see it from the front. To do this, I took my pre-made card base, I put the fold at 3 inches and sliced just a little bit off. For my pattern paper today, I chose a couple pieces from the brand new Trip to the Orchard paper pad from Not Too Shabby. I decided to go with that plaid and the pretty paper with the pumpkins. On mine, I'm going to put the pumpkin paper on the inside, so I cut a strip that was one and a quarter by five and a half. Then for the front, I cut a piece that was three and a half by five and a half. This piece is a little wider than the three inch section on the front of the card, but here you'll see because I'm going to be using a border punch, I actually needed it to be a little bit wider. This is a vintage, old, antique, whatever you want to call it, border punch from my stash, but I thought it would add such a pretty touch and give that same feel from the original card. As I continue to punch that border and start to put the card together, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. Today's is inspired by my use of this border punch, and I would like to know, when is the last time you used a punch on a card? Whether it was a border punch like me, a shape punch, maybe you have one of the punches where you put fishtails in the ends, let me know in that comment section below, and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know you've answered and would like me to see it. For me, the last time I used a punch is on this card, but I do use them, I would say, kind of frequently. I do keep them handy in my drawers, and I love a good border punch. I can't wait to see your answers. To decorate the front and for the sentiment on the inside, I'm using the new Pretty Pumpkin stamp set from Not Too Shabby. For the front, I'm going to use the three pumpkins from the set, and I will be stamping them in two different inks, the pumpkin and candy corn from Tailored Expressions. I'm going to show you today how you can still use those stamps that are maybe meant for coloring, but instead stamp them in colored inks and just leave them as is. I like this, how you can add all of the color with that background paper. So if you're a fan of those fun images, but maybe not coloring, this is an idea for you. The skinny, kind of tall one I stamped with the pumpkin, and the two on the bottom I stamped in candy corn. 
While I had my Misty out, I wanted to go ahead and stamp the sentiment on the inside, and I chose the Fall is in the Air sentiment from the set, and I did rotate my Misty so I could put that lower right hand corner of my card in now the lower right hand corner of the Misty. I just find for me it's easier to set up this way, and once my sentiment is centered and straight, I rotate my Misty back to the normal way that I like to use it. I inked it up with the pumpkin ink, and it stamped perfectly that first first time. There is a coordinating die set for the Pretty Pumpkin stamp set. It cuts out the pumpkins and the sentiments. Today I just chose the pumpkins and I took my stamped piece off screen and cut those out. Now we're going to get those added to the card. I want to have a little cluster of the pumpkins down at the bottom. And to help me get those straight across on the card, I am using the lines on the pattern paper. My two kind of shorter wide pumpkins are going to go in the background. I try to get even spacing on the left and right. And later I'll place that kind of tall skinnier one in the middle. You'll see there I held those two together temporarily with a piece of scotch removable tape. And now I'm going to add some glue to the back of the pumpkins, only where it will touch the front pattern paper. I don't want to get too much on there and then glue the card closed. Once I had the glue on there, I put it onto my card front and I made sure to turn it over. And if there was any glue coming out, I was just going to wipe that off with my finger. But there wasn't, so I set it to the side underneath the stamp block to let it dry. I use the Circle Loops die set from Simon Says Stamp to add a little extra decoration and help the pumpkin in the middle stand out from the other two. I used a scrap of craft cardstock on the largest die and it kind of reminds me of a twine nest without having to use twine. Once the glue was dry on the two background pumpkins, I removed the piece of tape that was holding them together and then I played a little bit with the placement of the center pumpkin and that circle loops die. Once I had a good idea of where I wanted both of those to go, I used Barely Art Liquid Glue to put a couple dots where the loops kind of connected on the die to hold that in place. And then I added some foam tape to the back of my center pumpkin and got that placed onto the card front. And you know my motto is, every card needs a little sparkle or bling, so I brought in the Fall is Coming enamel dots, which were also just recently released, and I placed a trio of the orange ones around that center pumpkin. And here are some close-up looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I was inspired by Chris to create today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to visit the rest of the artists on the hop. And until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.